The league leaders against the team sitting second bottom. What could possibly go wrong for Juventus tonight at home to Empoli? A six straight league win would send the Bianconeri four points clear overnight, but there are two factors not to be underestimated. New Empoli head coach Davide Nicola and prolific new signing Shimon Zurkowski. Under the lights in Turin, we're all set for Juventus against Empoli in round 22 of Serie A. But Vlahovic is capable of putting it in either top corner. And the way he's playing, you wouldn't bet against him. Vlahovic with the free kick, and Caprile got across to concede the game's first corner. Got that 3-0 victory, this was the ball which was potentially bending wide, but maybe not. Kostic. He's not averse to whipping in an early cross. Locatelli now. Cambiaso running at Cacace. Cambiaso with a shooting chance. Caprile didn't cover himself in glory. That's why Milik's been able to collect. Luperto got a toe to it. Yield is the 18-year-old Turkey international. His inclusion has been... That's loose from Milik, and it's going to be at least a yellow card. The studs were showing. Cherry was caught. And we have occasionally seen these upgraded. I think Malay is saying, speak to the VAR. And I think what the referee is doing at the moment... Any upgrade from a yellow card to a dismissal, but that was, well, just as we thought that. Livio Marinelli is now going across to take a look. Also help Inter indirectly in the title race. Livio Marinelli has had a second look and the yellow card will now become a red and Juventus with just 17 minutes on the clock and down to 10 men at home to Empoli. We have seen Juventus win games in the second half. Most recently at Lecce, it was goalless at the break there. They scored three times in the second half. They won't panic. They might hear with Cambiaghi. It's a good save from Szczesnik. Jassi back into the mix. Miscued by Alexandro. Cambiaghi coming to life. Gatti left it and Chains. They had to push it behind. This ball is so tricky. Chasny did so well because you can see so often. We see nobody touches this ball at the ball. Malé's corner and over by Cherry knocked it down into the ground. will feel there might be a spare man here as they're playing against 10. Malé with the free kick, Chassis just stuck out a leg and it loops over the bar. In ascertaining that the initial yellow card for Milik was actually a red, Luperto looking for Chassis, Kostic tracking back. Ismaili. Zurkowski. Ismaili stepping in. Turned down the square ball to Malé. Luperto has a go, but he's not known for his goals. We shouldn't draw any conclusions just yet, but it was one of those potential banana skins ahead of kickoff. We felt that talking amongst ourselves, Manuel and I, off the air before the game. That, but that's a mistake, and this is Fabio Miretti who couldn't take his chance. That's the chance, Patrick. That's the chance you don't have to miss. Because you'll get one or two. This is a glorious one. And Miretti cannot miss from there. And Jazzy will be so pleased that Juventus midfielder missed it. 
They'll be looking for Bremer and Gatti in particular in the middle. Miretti takes the corner. Gatti got his head to it. Vlaovic scores. His magic moment continues. Just when Juventus needed him to grab a goal. The set piece does the trick. He couldn't really miss from that range. And even when they're down to 10 then, Vlahovic keeps scoring. And Juventus lead again. We were saying that these moments are crucial, are decisive. One of several changes for Davide Nicola as he looks to make an impact on the match. Cambiaghi reminds he has number up soon. Cambiaghi. And that was awkward for Chesney. It's relieved to see the ball go wide, albeit with the aid of a deflection. Male. Luperto with the cross. Awkward. Baldanzi was waiting. And Chesney delighted with Alexandro. As soon as Luperto received the ball. Nicolò Cambiaghi. In comes the cross. Cancellieri! Not far away. It was a good header by Cancellieri. Again, Cambiaghi. Chelsea. Ismaili. Male keeps it moving. Baldanzi. Gets it back from Luperto. Baldanzi on his weaker side! He might yet leave the club, but Tommaso Baldanzi is Empoli through and through, and he scores the equaliser in Turin. Off the bench to hurt Allegri, to hurt Juventus, and Davide Nicola continues to work magic with a struggling side. He wanted a square ball, there was no option there. McKenney back towards Weyer, it's a nice give and go. Weyer has found Locatelli, and that's awkward for Valukiewicz. Yeah, that was indeed at the end. Kostic teases it in. That's McKenney. And Alexandro tried the overhead kick. Still there for Gatti. Juventus asking for a penalty. They feel there was a hand in there for an, from an Empoli player. We continue though because the Azzurri have it with Cambiaghi. And this is Cancellieri who is through here. What a challenge from Weyer. And Cambiaso completes the job. Now we're going to talk about Cancellieri first touch because he had the chance to score the second for Empoli. And he's very small as well. That's a good ball through from Zurkowski. Cambiaghi forced wide and changed it. Had to intervene. Good chance yet from tight angle, Cambiaghi. Not easy to score from there, Chesney. It is astonishing to speculate, and yet, Juventus's only loss came away. Ismaili heads it clear. Fazzini gives chase. Chesney had to be quick. And just as Cancellieri pounced on the ball, the referee blows the full time whistle. Baldanzi saying that Empoli could have won it there. Vlahovic got a goal early on in the second half. Baldanzi cancelled it out off the bench. Empoli feel they could have won it there with the last kick of the game, but Livio Marinelli had already committed to blowing the full-time whistle. No six-straight win for Juventus. They do move a further point clear of Inter, but the Nerazzurri have two games in hand, and it's two points dropped for Juventus. Full-time score here. Juventus won, Empoli won.